Your second question is an appalling question because I, I always feel like there are bills that we vote on, um, bills we sponsor, um, many statements we put out, and then we're in, um, in a panel like this and the question is posed, could you and Rashida do this? And it's like, how often should I make a schedule? Like, does this need to be on repeat every five minutes? Should I be like, so today I forgot to condemn Al-Qaeda. Uh, so here's the Al-Qaeda one. Today I forgot to condemn FGM. So here it goes. Today I forgot to condemn Hamas. So here it goes. Today I forgot, you know, I mean, I, I, it is um, a very frustrating question. It comes up. You can look at my record. I voted for bills. <laughs> Um, doing exactly what you're uh, asking me to do. I have put out statements upon statements. There's a bill in, in Congress, there's a resolution that I am the co-author of that I voted out of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And so I am, I think, quite disgusted, really, to be honest, that as Muslim legislators, we are constantly being asked to waste our time uh, speaking to um, issues that other people are not asked to speak to because the assumption exists is that we somehow support and are for, right? You know, the, there is an assumption. So I want to make sure that the next time someone is in an audience and is looking at me and Rashida and Abdul and Sam, that they ask us the proper questions that they will probably ask any member of Congress, or any legislator, or any politician. And would not come with an accusation that we might support something that is so abhorrent, so offensive, so evil, so vile, What we look for, and what this whole conversation is about, is that not only do we not have internalized fears about what we might believe and how that get, gets implemented, but that we also don't have right, assumptions about what our value basis might be because of where we might come from and who we pray to. And so I would like, not just for you, but for everyone, to know that if you want us to speak as politicians, American politicians, then you treat us as such. At a Muslim caucus event in Washington Tuesday, Congresswoman Ilhan Omar vowed to continue fighting for the rights of Muslims in America. Because if we don't fully confront it and push people, we're, we're going to be stuck here for another generation or two. The Minnesota Democrat, along with fellow Congresswomen Rashida Tlaib, also a Muslim American, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Iyanna Presley of Massachusetts, have been denounced by President Trump this for what he called unpatriotic comments. He also tweeted they should go back where they came from. Omar, a Somali refugee who came to the U.S., is the only one of the group not born in the country and has been the target of Trump's fiercest condemnations. At a recent rally, the president accused Omar of blaming the U.S. for the September 11, 2001 attacks because she once referred to the Muslim terrorists involved as some people did something. The crowd responded by chanting, send her back. Omar also stirred controversy in February when she suggested in a tweet Americans that rich Jewish American donors have too much else. influence over this U.S. policy towards Israel. Person. She later apologized after being rebuked by Democrats and Republicans alike. At the White House Monday, while meeting with Pakistan's leader, Trump continued to criticize the four congresswomen. Well, I think they're very bad for our country. I, I really think they must hate our country. In Minnesota, Omar was greeted by cheering crowds following Trump's attacks. Among her supporters at Tuesday's event was Kizir Khan, a Pakistani-American father of a U.S. soldier killed in Iraq, 
who at the Democratic Convention in 2016 criticized Trump's anti-Muslim rhetoric. The world and this nation looks up to you to lead. You have been chosen. Your time has chosen you. Omar says she is disgusted that because she is Muslim, many assume she is sympathetic to Islamic terrorists and extremists. As Muslim legislators, we are constantly being asked to waste our time uh, speaking to um, issues that other people are not asked to speak to. Most of the president's criticisms of the congresswomen analysts say are false or misleading and meant to energize his white supporters in advance of the 2020 presidential elections. Brian Patton, VOA News, Washington.